Hi, I'm Janine. This is KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and this is Get the Funk Out. Standing by to join me is American composer, conductor, violinist, violist, I think I'm saying that correctly, violist, excuse me, pianist and educator, Maria Newman. Welcome to the show. It's wonderful to be here, Janine. Thank you so much for having me. I heard about you because I watched the film Train Stop. I love and, that film. And you were, you were the composer on that, weren't you? Yes, I was. And uh, it was an absolute honor. I love the film. I, it's just right in the pocket of something that uh, speaks to me. So absolutely thrilling, well-directed, well-acted. Uh, the script is wonderful. So I could go on and on, as you can see, about Train Stop. <laughs> I love it. It's just too short, right? Right. It was. It was. It was a short. <laughs> um, there's nothing better on being on a project that you love, that you feel so enmeshed in. Definitely. You know? that's, that's so true. How did you get to where you are now? I mean, you've done so many things. Well, uh, yes, I love a good project. I have to say that. Ever since I was a little girl, I have loved taking something from nowhere, from somewhere, from anywhere, and bringing it together and making something out of it and seeing it to fruition. That's always been like something that. wonderful. And it, it, even with intellectual properties, uh, such as, say, music by itself, which you can't really touch, but you can feel, somehow bringing that to the recording level, the performance level, the marriage level, say, with a film, uh, all these different sorts of, of ways of bringing that about is, is something I'm almost... I just live and breathe it. I love it. One thing you said, you love bring it to fruition. A lot of times people have these ideas. They either don't get them started. I'm guilty of that too. But bringing it to fruition, getting it done is so rewarding. It certainly is. You know, I feel like I am a good follow through person, but it's mostly because I have this amazing mother who just told me that I could do anything. And I'm at don't know if I'm good at it or not, but the point is, is that I feel like, you know, somebody had to start, say, a university. Once upon a time, university, no name, uh, did not exist. And somebody had to start that. So I feel in my own tiny ant-like way, I have been able to start something and bring it to fruition and that it is valid because, um, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's large or small, it's valid because a human being uh, thought of it, started it, brought it to uh, where it, it needs to go. Yeah. And, and just lastly with that, I feel like, you know, I'm never quite satisfied, which means that I want to keep going. I think that's actually a, a gift that, uh, that I, I always want to keep, keep going. Is it the also love of a challenge and love of learning and love of a lot of different things? Oh, most definitely. So yeah, I mean, love of learning, I would say that's something that goes on until you meet your grave. And I do love that. I, I love that the story of the very famous cellist, Pablo Casals, who uh, was in his 90s when he passed away. He's almost like the, the father of cello playing, of one of a musician's musician, an artist artist and uh, one of the people as well and uh, but he was practicing Bach solo Bach JS Bach a mm. kind of a real uh, uh, Bible of, uh, of string playing if you want to call it that and he uh, people would say oh uh, Maestro Casals, you you were so fantastic. Uh, why are you continuing to practice? I mean, you're venerable. Your your accomplishments are multitudinous. And he said, "Well, I think I could improve. I think I could get a little better. <laughs> I'm always looking to improve." Amazing. I love that. I feel great like mindset. Definitely, yeah. because yeah. if you finish something, you've arrived. What is there? Uh, you know, I mean, great. You want to want to be, uh, I, I don't know, proud seems arrogant, but you, you want to be, and satisfied too, somehow seems, I mean, yes, you can have that satisfaction, but something about wanting to go on and continue sure. to, be, to be better. Yeah. yeah. Make yourself better. Um, it's interesting. I'll just give you a side note. When I was younger, I picked up guitar at 10. I was living in New York and I was reading music. I was playing I learned classical music um, and 
then I let it go, like breaking up with a boyfriend. And then at 14, I picked up electric, but I had a very bad teacher because they would just teach me like a riff, the chorus. It, it was never, we're going to teach you music theory. I mean, I started thinking maybe he didn't know to do that. And I say this because now I'm learning music theory. Now I want to really go back and learn what I should have learned when I was 10 because I have a love of learning. Beautiful. It's never ending. Yeah. That's so true. And, you know, going along with the music theory standpoint, um, our 12-year-old son, we have five children, and our 12-year-old son, uh, he, I, was, I was responsible for his home learning, and we were studying uh, all about many different things, from, from points of grammar to history to, uh, to mathematics, et cetera. And I, in a way, I feel like as an adult teaching my then uh, elementary school child that I was learning more as an adult than I ever had sure. as a child. And my interest was, was voracious. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred yes. percent focused. Yeah. Right. I love sure. it. Yeah. I do love it. At what point did you start becoming musical in your life? Well, that's a really good question. So I wonder if this is a nature versus nurture question. And I know that's always a question. It can't really be answered. And people have been trying to answer that question for years. And I think, of course, as an individual myself, of course, and every single person in this world as an individual will uh, will bring that to mind in their own way. But for me, um, this is the question because I came from a musical family. So my father uh, was born, uh, his, his, his mother uh, immigrated uh, when she was four years old. She, she was smuggled over actually in a trunk. But from where? From where? From Russia. From Russia. Went through, um, went through Ellis Island at the time. And, uh, and then my father was born. They were an absolute abject poverty. But somehow, uh, a, a lady, it, it, they lived in New Haven, Connecticut. And New Haven's an interesting town, or at least it was at the time. And of course, this is where Yale is. And I know there's some, uh, you know, some talk about Yale at the moment. But uh, Yale, uh, or New Haven rather, has a, a real line, dividing line, which is a little disconcerting, where you've got a lot of wealth, and then the next block is a lot of poverty. So um, in a way, maybe that that's what helped my dad in, a, in the sense that he was on the poverty line, definitely. And then uh, somebody who was in a less um, poor situation uh, uh, invited him. Uh, had heard about uh, some musical ability, but they didn't have a piano, they didn't have anything, and invited him to study and found this great talent that was uh, that was emanating from him. Amazing. And exactly, yeah. set him up with scholarships and all kinds of things. That was absolute luck, absolute yeah. luck. Anyway, he ended up really uh, making a lot of that talent. And by the time he was 15, he had been, had been invited down to uh, conduct at the, at the Follies in New York. Uh, there was discovered by uh, Berlin, Irving Berlin, brought mm -hmm. to uh, California with his, you know, family of a billion. We have a big family <laughs> tagging <laughs> along. And, and everybody's resettled in, in Hollywood, uh, where my father did some ghostwriting and then eventually uh, became one of the fathers of, of modern film music. Uh, which was, which was, uh, I mean, a great legacy for me. My father died when I was eight years old. So to have mm -hmm. that legacy of music uh, mm -hmm. left behind uh, for me to savor and hold close to my heart was and is, remains to this day, a, a great, great gift. Anyway, so that was the That's family. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, it, I'm so grateful for you, to you for allowing me to share it. Thank you. Um, but anyway, so uh, uh, all of us, children of, of Alfred Newman, and by the way, he ended up winning nine Academy Awards. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think it's maybe the most ever won by a single person. So, I mean, Walt Disney, of course, has won many more, but uh, single, I'd have to, you know, again, things are changing all the time, but um, it was, it, it's kind of a neat thing and nominated over 45 times, um, but was eventually, um, I think he really wanted to uh, just be in the position where he was performing music and then he never really got to. So he felt composition was a little bit lonely. Anyway, tangent aside, uh, he, 
uh, inspired in my mother, as well as in their children together, uh, a love for music. So out of the five children that they had together, and, and my father had two, I have two brothers from previous marriages of my father, uh, both of whom are, and one passed away, unfortunately, uh, very creative and brilliant. And then the ones, uh, the five of us that were born to my mother, Martha Montgomery, and my, my father, Alfred Newman, uh, uh, three of the five are in music professionally. So my brother, Thomas Newman, mm -hmm. uh, is an Academy Award nominated 15 times. I think he's been nominated, never won. Oh. Oh. Um, I know, he's so good. He did, this year he did the score to 1917 and it was nominated for an Academy Award. And then my brother David, also an Academy Award nominated composer. Um, also, he did Galaxy Quest, by the way, which I Ooh. love, that spoof on Star Trek. It's mm -hmm. brilliant, um, brilliant score. And my beautiful cousin, Randy Newman, uh, who was a, a, an amazing uh, film composer and of course, well known uh, as a singer songwriter yes. and satirist. Uh, but all of us came from this, um, this nature and nurture of music. My yeah. mother was determined to see us educated in music. We had to. And then the three of five of us, Randy's a cousin, but the three of the five of us, uh, you know, went into it as a living. Do you ever wonder, uh, but let me ask you two things. First of all, where in Russia did they immigrate from? Okay, so they, I, maybe it's modern day Ukraine. It, it was between Odessa and Kiev. It was a Vilnius? 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 It was between, uh, I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. That is ringing a bell. I, you two were, were, were like sisters. Um, my uh, Russian uh, yes. family came from, in 1890. And um, it was exactly the same. That's amazing. Okay, so. For Rome issues as well. Yeah, and I have, if I ever can meet you in person, are you in LA? I am. I'm in Malibu. Okay, so I have a thick family tree of the Bernsteins going back to Russia with pictures and maps of Vilnius. Oh. So I'll share with you sometime. But I ask you this because do you ever wonder if perhaps some ancestors in Russia were musical? Oh, absolutely. 100%. I wish I knew more. Yeah. I, I would love it, but I can't imagine that they, that they wouldn't have been, even if, right. uh, you know, I, also don't know about the assimilation process, of course, which was very, uh, you know, in at the time that our, our grandparents and, and uh, great grandparents would have immigrated from, um, from Russia. But uh, I know a lot of people really wanted to forget their past and, and assimilate into their present. So I, I think people were scared. I think they were frightened. They were scared of being killed. They were, they right. were, hunted down and you know we're in the middle of so much of that right now in terms of of equality and all of that in our in our current uh environment here in the united yeah. states but at that time escaping from that fear that um uh you know that sense of of not being valued was uh yeah. was i think really important to i don't know if that's how your family was but my family really uh, really just sort of blended in to, uh, to the walls of America. They of did. The they went to Manhattan and Connecticut. Yeah. Yes. Did you say yours too? Manhattan yeah. and Connecticut? Because mm -hmm. New Haven, Connecticut, and then Manhattan with my dad, with the Follies. Mm -hmm. we, we are, we have that. Yeah. Okay. Well, before I put my foot in my mouth even more, um, I do feel grateful that our, our grandparents made the trek to. Uh, oh, um, I do too. I mean, even though we're a work in progress here in America, we're still. Uh, Right. I feel very thankful. Yeah. yeah. Um, because the reason I ask you this is because I feel like now more than ever, even if someone is watching or listening to this and thinking, you know, I used to play an instrument, I used to do this, it's not too late. And, and as you know, uh, spending time immersing yourself in music just takes you on a mental vacation, which we all need. Oh, most definitely. So there's a, for me, okay, if I've just gotten a big project done, you would think I'd want to step away from music because that is clearly what my project would have been, uh, you know, highlighting is music. Right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yet I tend to go to my violin or my viola um, and, and play solo Bach. And that takes me away when I'm terribly upset uh, also, 
that kind of music will take me away. On the other hand, there is the side of music for me that is a lot of work. So music is great, but if you're a composer, you have to take something again from the ether, something that's coming to you from somewhere and write these intangible feelings and uh, just to be silly notes and get them down on paper for other human beings to be able to read or hear and and bring that to to fruition right. so um there is a process um of course of getting all this down on paper but then you have to uh do your bit of of um uh desktop publishing if you want to call it that um notation um preparing uh inlays now it, of course they're all done on computer but so that other people can see what you the have parts. and then you can share it tangible parts of me yes sheet music essentially right. Uh, and so that is a lot of work. And then the recording process, of course, is a lot of work as well, but terribly fun, I think. Um, but a lot of work and a lot of time. You've got, you know, you've got uh, recording. You've got to have somebody who's wonderful at it with your, you know, recording mixers and then uh, getting into an editing process, a mastering process um, in terms of film, fitting it into the film, then dubbing it. You know, perhaps it's covering dialogue in a film. But there's a lot uh, beyond that when you're in the business of music as well. So in closing on that, unless you want to talk more about it, I feel lucky that I love music as uh, as as part of my heart and soul because uh, I when I'm in the business of it, I definitely see uh, and feel uh, that emanating from me, the music emanating from me. So I can put up with some of the things that you have to put up with. And, you know, I mean, I guess if you go to the gym and finally you get to the point where you just love the endorphins you feel and you, you know, you work out and you feel great, but getting up to that point, the, the pain that comes before that point, I mean, there's a lot to be learned and oh, a yeah. lot to get through to, to finally get to where you actually really can be fluent and love something. Right. But as you just said, the word fluent, um, you are very knowledgeable, in all different aspects of music. So that makes you so skilled to whether you're composing, whether you're doing your own thing. It's so important to have those different skill sets. I have, I feel good. Look, I had to turn down a lot of fun stuff at certain times in life. Um, you know, I, I wonder about the violin, the violin, you know, sounds it's, it, even more than the cello, say, which of course is has a more um, uh, maybe human humanistic sound, uh, but the violin can be when you're first. Well, not can it is when you first start violin. It is so squeaky, and you know maybe some people's parents don't even want to hear them the, <laughs> their kids playing. Yeah. Um, but I I think if you're willing to get through that spot, um, then you are uh, on your way to fluency. But you have to be willing to enjoy the process um, or you just have to force yourself to get through it and then you get to the point where you love it <laughs> so you can do no, it it's, in, un anyway. it's uncomfortable you feel dumb you feel this and that and but you have to get through the sloppiness the messiness like right. the well, I wouldn't say feel dumb I I'd hate to say that I I would say that you just have to be willing to get through what's difficult in That's order true. to get to the point now okay say you're studying piano so piano at the its top level or even an intermediate level is is, is extremely difficult instrument to play with many things going on at the same time uh, ten fingers ten notes uh, violin you've got you know uh, four fingers that you use cello you also use your thumb um, and you've got a bow but piano uh, you can go to a piano and at least you can play you know a, a note and it sounds pretty with violin you can't even you know necessarily get a pretty note right away and there's so no they frets have their the guitar. there's no frets no, no, there are no frets. But guitar is another instrument that um, could sound good casually, but played at the highest levels, of course, is, is as difficult as any, as any instrument on earth. So uh, whenever you get to the highest level, the, the array and degree of difficulty uh, that is, um, that is um, 
uh, when when you're able to bring it to fluency it is you know and you still have to keep working to keep it at that level uh, just as you would if you were a runner and you had to keep you okay I've gotten to be the best runner in the world but then if uh, you stop running you you may remember how to run you meant your technique but you have to build yourself back up if you were to let let go so yeah. uh yeah so even when you've brought it into your body and mind uh it's still something that takes work but uh, you know there's certain instruments that just you know you can you can play a drum at the beginning and uh you know but how uh, could you really do a brilliant role i i couldn't do a brilliant role you know snare roll or something like that right. it really takes a lot yeah yeah but it's worth it. And you can start at a later age. You really, really can. So uh, uh, some people say if you don't start when you're young, um, you did have your uh, your acoustic guitar when you were young and then you I switched did. over to electric. And um, yeah, yeah. but but you really can um, you really can do a lot as an older as an older starter, uh, you know, right. commencing those studies later. You can. I and also the things that you thought were so challenging, like boring or confusing let's say music theory maybe that was your hurdle when you're older i feel like you have more patience or it clicks a little differently i think it's wonderful when you can figure out so you go to a restaurant you have a beautiful meal you don't know what's in it but you have the you have the um the end result and you can maybe bring out or wine drinking or something you can bring out flavors or bouquets or whatever it is so yes theory in a way is breaking down those components yeah. uh it would be an analogy of breaking down those components and, and figuring out what it what it is that might because theory right what it might have uh taken to put a piece of music together and what certain composers tendencies were the language their unique languages that they have have uh brought to the world beethoven was one of the first uh to bring a, a huge difference between extremely ferociously loud and incredibly quiet uh so that um dichotomy of uh of of volumes as well as the dichotomy and the mercurial nature of the human soul. So, you know, we know a lot more about uh, uh, the mind now than we, than I, I, you know, I can't say that for, I should say this, I assume we know more, we've had more study on the mind now than we did in Beethoven's time when he died in 1827. Um, but maybe we would have diagnosed Beethoven as having some interesting mental, uh, um, capacity. Uh, yes, capacity is much better. I was trying, you know, it's very, I, I'm very worried right now not to say, uh, not to put the wrong, when I don't know something, not to I put know. the wrong terminology in on. Sure. Yes. So yeah. yes, capacity is brilliant. It's a, that's a brilliant term because it's so positive. Well, one thing I learned, I remember in graduate school was we, there are about seven different intelligences. This uh, gentleman, Howard Gardner from ha uh, Harvard talked about this. And I thought, I wish I had known this when I was younger because I was not a very good student, but I understood music. Right. But I felt dumb. Oh. <laughs> I did. I was a terrible student, but the problem was the way things were presented were not the way I could learn. I'm a visual learner. Right. I need things repeated. And an back oral back. learner, it sounds like as well. Yes. With it. Yeah. Right. So now when I go for walks in the morning, I listen to some amazing guitar teachers on YouTube, one right. in particular, Paul Davids, and I'm listening to him explain music theory and he's funny and it's engaging. And I'm like, oh, I get yeah. it. I get right. It. Yeah. Right. And you're ready for it now. And I'm sure as you became the human being that you are, that you became more open to seeing, as you were saying, those degrees of, of intelligence. But clearly you are on the top echelon of intelligence. <laughs> so I'm That's so sorry that you felt uh, that. You oh, I did. I was a really hard. bad student. I was yeah, a well. horrible student until I kind of figured out like what what clicked and that takes time you have to be patient with yourself it does and maybe you didn't like it either you know, i did not maybe. some people don't not. like it if you no. don't like it you're gonna be good at things you really like i think right. so you really liked music and uh yeah the the visual concepts of learning but i know i used to annoy the people in my house playing things over and over and mm -hmm. that negative feedback was terrible on me because that's the way you get better. You play things over and over and it might not sound boring to you, but it was annoying other people. And 
you know, then I would play quieter, you know. <laughs> Oh, see, it's a whole now, other story. <laughs> so my mother was the opposite. We would get to the end, not even of a piece, but just to the end of a musical phrase, and she would be clapping. That's Bravo! great. Yeah, it was yeah. very, it was very sweet. Amazing. So she really wanted. For me, when I'm listening to people practice, it's one of my favorite things to listen to that over and over again. It's very soothing to me, yes. even though it's intense. Right. So, what advice would you give to people right now that are in a funk? You know, they, yeah, need to do so something. I, uh, well, I'm acutely aware of what is going on. Of course, I feel that I am in the middle of this pandemic with everybody else with a great privilege of um, a beautiful place to live in beautiful surroundings. I'm not um, right next door to a lot of other people, which I miss people. That's, that's terrible. But yeah. Um, so I, if I'm going to be playing my violin, somebody's not going to be, you know, knocking on the wall next door saying, shut up. I can't stand you playing your violin anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I really have a, a privilege, uh, there that I wish that I could share, uh, with, with other people. Uh, on, on the other hand, uh, I, I, I love the fact that, um, we have, look, we're talking right now without even, I mean, I suppose we could have before we might not have, I might've come down to the studio and we would have had an, an audio interview for your right. incredible radio show and, and go from there. But right now we're actually seeing each other in person. And I assume your audience might, might see me. I'm not sure if they will or not. If you're, I'm going to have this as a video clip and I audio. Well, see, that's something that's really different from, yes. from COVID times to prior, mm -hmm. maybe. I'm not sure. But it is. It, I wasn't yeah. doing it as Zoom before. Right. So, so that's a, a real positive. So for me, a person who always loves a great project, uh, starting a project in, in COVID times that you would never have thought of doing before and realizing that you can do it, that you, a human being, can do anything that is as valid as any other human being on the planet, that we are all individuals. Every single one of us is an individual that hopefully will um, say something to the, the, the greater whole, meaning the larger whole, and, uh, and uh, say something that can speak to even one other person or even to yourself is, again, valid. And I know I keep saying valid. That's, I guess, my whole... Uh, no, <laughs> a mantra for the day that and bringing it to fruition but so for us we um we run um uh, we're concert artists so uh being in the home uh again i told you that i had a lot of privilege being um in a in a place that wasn't sharing a wall uh with not an apartment or a uh yeah. something and so i do also have my husband who is a fantastic uh musician and i have two of my, my older daughters that are uh what they're just graduated from college and they're uh, they're here with us and they're uh, glorious crystal voice singers um my my oldest son uh who is a speaker beyond speakers so we have been putting on and we've been getting better at it uh, technically speaking we've been uh putting on streaming concerts from our venue um mm -hmm. which happens to be uh in our home so we run something called the montgomery arts house for music and architecture and it's under a non-profit umbrella called the malibu friends of music and so we are we're just getting ready to stream um we'll rebroadcast each each live stream but we'll be getting ready to, to stream um uh five separate events in actually six including our preview in late august and Great. then another three in september so we Great. are Again, we're learning. The first one we did was completely on our iPhones. And then later we uh, ended up putting things on to Pro Tools, you know, on to, with really beautiful yes. microphones. And we were, we're still not dealing with great cameras, but we're getting there. And so that has been really amazing because also um, we've increased our our venue okay so say if you have a hundred people in your venue but then you're speaking to five or six thousand we're, we're not all that public yet we're mostly uh, uh we've uh we do have uh youtube but we still have our uh, our live streams on facebook and then we have our live streams um uh, basically to people who are uh invited and know about it so Good. we haven't we haven't gone beyond that but we've increased our you know our audience uh, up to you know five to seven thousand people instead of mm -hmm. the hundred that is the most we could have in our venue that would be very crowded at a time Good. so that's that's been great um i don't know uh writing a, a 
writing a, a, a radio play or a, a Zoom play that I know that seems so interesting to me. Something, in a way, COVID puts us on a more even playing level yes. than we were before. Right. Um, people have, a, a, again, a unique voice and people who hadn't, you know, gone through the, the I, I'm not going to say the right word. I really have to be careful. But um, it sometimes I, I, there's a big question as to why, uh, you know, certain people are famous and certain people aren't. What I love, what I love about, you're going to think I'm crazy. Okay. What I love about performing on, uh, uh, on that streaming with no audience uh, in the room is that nobody claps for you when you're done. Wow. So you're offering something that you don't have to say, oh God, was I, was I good enough? Yeah. Was I, did I, you know, oh, they're not clapping hard enough. Oh, they really hated that piece. Oh, um, you know, which is, uh, which is some, you know, uh, uh, way that you, you, you kind of feel that you're not good enough. Yes. I, I love, I love the idea that you're making an offering that is, is, just that, an offering right. of music and yourself. Right. Well, it goes from typically an extrinsic reward. Yay. You're right. Getting, right. To intrinsic. You're like, that's I'm good with it. Exactly. I'm good with it. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. And, and again, I miss, um, well, you know what? I miss everybody, but I have been um, uh, with our, we have this festival every summer called the Malibu Coast Music Festival. And it's in Malibu, and it is. Uh, we have um, we have artists come in from all over the world, um, uh, maybe a group at a time, and they bring their kids, and our kids all play together, and they live here with us at our home. We're all right. squished in, and that will not be happening this year, of course, as you of course. know. Would, would yeah. Yeah. But I know. But we are uh, going to be taking visits to our guest artists on our streaming events, so we will have them record their live uh, performances in their home, mostly not venues, mostly not stages without audience, but I'm, yeah. I'm really home. interested in people going to their homes, right, mm. and seeing them there where they're, they're human beings like the rest of us, where we're not separated by a stage, but we're actually visiting them as yes. they play, bring, they're bringing us into their own musical and magical world I at love their that. homes. So we're gonna be doing that as well. We're excited so about that. That and um, will all the information about that be on your website, or where can people find you? Yes, and so that is uh, www.malibufriendsofmusic.org. Okay. So www.malibufriendsofmusic.org, and uh, yes, they can get information. Their uh, information will be coming up shortly, but it will give. Uh, there are links already on there. Uh, concert dates have have finally been solidified, so that will be up on the website in the next few days. Good. And yes, artists listed, and uh, the concerts won't run as long as a regular uh, uh, in-person concert. They'll, I think, uh, typically run um, anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes. Some might be shorter. Some uh, One definitely will be longer because we're doing a silent movie with live music, and so that will, uh, that will be something that um, could be very right. interesting uh, to see us sweating as we try to keep exactly in the right place with the movie. Sounds amazing. So where can people find out more about you? Is there, you going to uh, Yeah, they, well, um, I, they can look me up on Malibu. Sorry to be so embarrassed. They can, <laughs> they can look me up on Malibu Friends of Music as well. They okay. can Google Maria Newman, uh, composer. There, are, there is a Maria Newman who's a New York Times photographer, I think. That is not me, though. I, I She's brilliant, yes. Um, but um, they, uh, they it, there's a, you know, half wrong Wikipedia article. Um, it's not <laughs> wrong actually, but <laughs> you're not in charge of your own Wikipedia. I'll tell you that. That's All right. It. But I do appreciate Wikipedia a lot. Um, so people can, can Google me. I do have a, a YouTube that I'm afraid I'm not as active on as I would like. This has nothing to do with our streaming concerts, but it's called uh, Maria Newman official. Um, so there are, I think the places to find you. Lot, yeah. Good. Well, we have to wrap up, but I have really enjoyed this. As have I. Thank you so much. I hope we can do it again. And it would be so wonderful to have you come and host one of our concerts. That'd be Maybe amazing. Maybe in the fall if you, yeah. I would love that. To be a celebrity host. I'd love to, yeah, come one of, one of your events live when we're back live. Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. fingers crossed that we get uh, some great treatments and yeah. really uh, safe vaccines. Right. 
But in the meantime, this is a wonderful thing you're doing online because people can just be themselves, be in their homes and still be, you know, sharing their creativity. Absolutely. Well, I love also that there are yoga classes online. There, there are uh, art classes, beautiful art classes online. You can order your your um, um, canvases and paints from, uh, you know, from the store, and they can be dropped at your home. There are so many things people can do that are yes. uh, in the creative arts that are that are wonderful. I know. I'm, and essential to stay positive. They have to be. I know so many people you know? are yeah. are hurting, and I'm I'm hurting right along. Absolutely. So, all right, Maria, thank you so much. I've really enjoyed this. Thank you so very much. Okay. We'll talk soon. Excellent.